वेलकम फ्रेंड्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिस्टेंस एंड ओपन लर्निंग यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मुंबई वी वेलकम यू फॉर द सेकेंड स्पोकन ट्यूटोरियल इन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ अप्लाइड मैथमेटिक्स पेपर टू फॉर बी एस सी आई टी सेमेस्टर टू ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मुंबई फ्रेंड्स एज वी हैव सीन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर द सिलेबस ऑफ द सेमिस्टर टू पेपर अप्लाइड मैथमेटिक्स टू Six units are there. In that, in this video, we are going to cover the first module in the unit one of complex numbers. So, what is included in this? In this video of for the module one, we have the first topic, introduction to complex number system, and the second topic is about different forms of a complex number. In the series, uh, we have for the unit one, we have three to four videos, which will be describing the giving the brief content about unit one. Let us start with introduction to complex numbers first. Any number of the type z equal to a plus i v, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the imaginary number, which is given by the formula i equal to square root of minus one, is called as a complex number. Understand that this a and b, which is coming in the complex number, both are real numbers. The first number which appears a is called as the real part of the complex number z. And is denoted by R E of Z. So R E of Z stands for the real part of the complex number. The second number B is called as the imaginary part of Z. Obviously, because it is coming along with the imaginary number I, denoted by I M of Z. Friends, when we are solving problems, we require this values of I. So let us go through that. Since we know that I is equal to square root of minus one, if you take square on both the sides. We get i square equal to minus one. If I multiply by i on both the sides, I get i cube equal to minus i. If I do this once again, I get i raised to four equal to minus i square. But minus i square is minus into minus one, hence plus one. We should know all these uh, four values of i because it will be helpful to solve the problems. And lastly, the set of all such complex numbers is denoted by the alphabet script C. See the difference between the capital C which we write. and this c so we will be denoting this set of complex numbers by the script c alphabet let us go to some definitions the first important definition is about modulus of a complex number if i have a complex number z equal to a plus ib then the modulus of this complex number is given by mod z equal to square root of the square of the real part plus square of the imaginary part a square plus b square mod z is uh, written in the form with two vertical lines And z inside that, so modulus of z equal to square root of sum of the squares of real part and imaginary part. Then argument of a complex number a r g of z. Argument of z is given by the formula tan inverse of b upon a. Or to remember, we can remember it as tan inverse of imaginary part upon real part b upon a. Let us take an example. If your z is equal to minus three plus four i. Then compare it with the complex number which we have a plus i b. A is equal to three, b is equal to four. So by the formula of mod z, we have mod z equal to square root of a square, which is three square, plus b square, which is four square. So square root of nine plus sixteen, square root of twenty five, equal to five. To find the argument, we go to the formula again, tan inverse of imaginary part upon real part. So tan inverse of four upon three. Whatever this answer is, this is the argument of Z. We'll understand this more with when we see the geometrical picture about the complex numbers in a few seconds. Now let us go to the different forms of a complex number. The first form is about the Cartesian form of a complex number. So the Cartesian form of a complex number, this is our normal x y axis, the horizontal x axis, the vertical y axis, intersection point, the origin zero zero. Then take any point on the x y plane, call it as P of A B. You can see here, this is P of A B. Then this A B is nothing but how we write our complex number. So we can think of our complex number z equal to a plus i b in the x y plane, with the first number a that is a real part of z coming from the x axis x coordinate, and the imaginary part b coming from the y axis the y coordinate. So our complex number is nothing but you can see this directed segment O P. So this is our complex number. I was talking about the modulus. This modulus is nothing but the length of this directed segment. If I found, I want to find the length of this segment OP, 
I know this is a right angle triangle. So the base is A and the height is B. So my hypotenuse that is this mod Z, the length of this segment is square root of base square plus height square to so square root of A square plus B square. So this is what this representation of a complex number is called as in the Cartesian form. Now let us go to the polar form of a complex number and see what is the difference between the representation of a complex number in Cartesian to polar. You can look at this. Uh, this what we are seeing is the representation of the complex number in the polar form. It is nothing very difficult. We can see that this is our same directed segment OP. And the only difference you see now is we have added this angle theta. So the angle made by this directed segment with the positive direction of x-axis, let us denote it by theta. And if I know this theta, I know the base of the triangle, the height of the triangle and this directed len segment length of that. So let us call this as R now. This is nothing but modulus of Z. Then by simple trigonometry, I have cos theta, which is equal to adjacent upon hypotenuse. So my adjacent value is A. So cos theta is equal to A upon R. And if I just cross multiply, then my a is equal to r into cos theta. So you can see here in this p of a b equal to we have replaced the value of a with r cos theta that is coming by the definition of cos theta. Similarly for this theta the sin theta value is opposite upon hypotenuse opposite length is equal to b. So b by r is sin theta or simply b is equal to r times of sin theta. Writing the complex number z equal to a plus i b in the form of r cos theta plus a sin theta is called nothing but the polar representation and this r is our modulus of z which we can see i have written here r equal to square root of a square plus y square such kind of representation of complex number is called as the polar representation or polar form of a complex now let us go to the exponential form that is the third way of writing a complex number if my z is equal to r times cos theta plus i sin theta which is in the polar form and I use the fact that e raised to ix is equal to cos x plus i times of sin x. I am not explaining from where this term has come, but we will use this to define the complex number in the form of exponential form. So if e raised to ix is equal to cos x plus ix, you can just compare with the r cos theta plus i sin theta. The portion which is in the bracket now can be replaced with e raised to i theta. This is nothing but the representation of the complex number in exponential form. When to use which form depends upon what is the requirement of the problem. Say for example, if you want to do multiplication of complex numbers, then exponential form is the best part to use because multiplication in complex in exponential form is quite simple as compared to the previous one. When we do the multiplication in this video, we will understand this in more detail. Let us go ahead and define the conjugate of a complex number. I will define all the conjugate of a complex number algebraically for all the three forms which we have seen. Also, I will show you the geometrical picture of a conjugate of a complex number so that you understand it more clearly. So, I have written this form. The first form is Cartesian form. We know that our Z is written in Cartesian form as A plus IB. Then Z bar, as you can see here, Z bar is Z and a line over it. This denotes the conjugate of a complex number. What we do is simply we negate the imaginary part. You can see with this red color, there is a plus here. It has been replaced with a minus here. So to find the conjugate of a complex number, we simply negate or change the sign of the imaginary part. If I have my complex number in the polar form r into cos theta plus i sin theta, what will be the conjugate of this? Yes, you are right. This plus will be replaced with minus. We will get r times cos theta minus i, I sin theta. And what is about the exponential form? If I have r into e raised to i theta as the uh, complex number, then what should happen to this? Again, this plus here was representing e raised to i theta. If this becomes minus here, then the polar form to exponential form conversion of the conjugate also is r into e raised to minus i theta. This is about the algebraic way of describing the conjugate of a complex number. Now we will see how geometrically we mean by conjugate of a complex number. Well, this is what we I what is the geometrical picture of a conjugate of a complex number. Again, see that this is our positive x-axis, this is our positive y-axis. This was our z equal to a plus ib and this is the point p of ab which is denoting the complex number. Then finding conjugate as we see that we have only negated, negated the imaginary part. So if I want instead of ab, a minus b, 
I have to go down to the negative y axis. So this is a point A of A and minus B. Let us call this P dash. So this from origin to P, this directed line segment, this is our z bar or the conjugate of the complex number. So z bar is equal to A minus I B. The angle theta which was representing the angle made by the complex number z with the positive direction of x axis has now become minus theta. So what actually we are doing by writing the conjugate, we are simply reflecting the complex number along the x axis. So if this was the complex number z, then its conjugate is nothing but the exact reflection, suppose this is a mirror, the x axis acts as a mirror, then it is a mirror reflection of this p on x axis which is called as the conjugate of the complex number. So that is what we mean by geometrically a conjugate of a complex number. Let us go ahead to the next topic that is algebra of complex numbers. So if you want to add two complex numbers, what will you do? Okay, the addition is very obvious. If I have z1 equal to a1 plus ib1, z2 equal to a2 plus ib2, then z1 plus z2 is simply adding the real part with the real part and imaginary part with the imaginary part. That is our intuitive guess and that is what we do. A1 is added with A2 and B1 is added with B2. This I term is common, so we get I times of B1 plus B2. How to do subtraction? Okay, subtraction is very simple and it is exactly the same way how we do addition. This plus here, Z1 plus Z2 will become Z1 minus Z2. We will get a minus here and hence we will get a A1 minus A2 and B1 minus B2 here. So, subtraction is similar to addition. What if I have a scalar multiplication? Suppose I have z equal to a plus ib, a complex number and a scalar that is a real number k. Then what is k times of z? It is k times of a plus ib. What will this be equal to? Yes, our guess is correct. It will be simple term by term multiplication k times of a plus i into k times of b. What about we want to multiply two complex numbers z1 and z2? I have a1 plus ib1, a2 plus ib2. Then multiplication is very simple. You do term by term multiplication. The first term a1 gets multiplied with a2 here, then a1 again multiplied with i times of b2, ib1 getting multiplied with a2 and ib1 getting multiplied with ib2. Now i into i becomes i square and we know that i square is equal to, yes, minus 1. So what is z1, z2? This a1 minus a1, a2 minus b1, b2. I have brought this last term together because this is the real part and whatever is along with i which is the imaginary part I have been clubbed together. I will recommend that don't remember this as a formula because it is of no use. When you, whenever we have to multiply using Cartesian form, only simple thing to do is term by term multiplication and converting the powers of i into simple numbers like i square equal to minus 1, i cube equal to minus i, i raised to 4 equal to 1. That is all what we should remember. How to find reciprocal of a complex number? If I have z equal to a plus ib as a complex number, then what is 1 by z? 1 upon a plus ib. Well, in mathematics, we do a very favorite kind of thing that you multiply and divide by the conjugate. You must have seen this in higher school also. What is the conjugate of a plus ib? It is a minus ib. We have seen just now. So we multiply and divide so that the overall uh, answer remains the same. Now we have a minus ib in the numerator in the denominator. See the denominator terms. We have the terms of the form x plus y into x minus y. And what is x plus y into x minus y by our simple algebra? It is x square minus y square. But x square minus y square in this case becomes a square minus i square b square. i square is minus 1 which will make that minus i square b square as plus b square. So this is what we have. But what is this equal to? In what we know in that terms the numerator a minus ib is the conjugate z bar and the denominator a square plus b square. Remember what was mod z? Mod z was square root of a square plus b square. So this is square of that. Therefore, now we have a formula kind of thing that 1 by z is equal to z bar upon mod z square. Try to remember this because this will be useful in any combinations like I can bring this mod z square on the left hand side by cross multiplication. So my mod z square will be equal to z into z bar. We will see this when we will be solving some more problems. For this video, let us stop here now. We'll, I recommend you that you go through all these basic concepts of complex number system and so that in the next video we can solve some problems based on the basic concepts of complex numbers. So in the next video, we will see the unit 1, second module which will be dealing with problem solving related to whatever we have learned in the first video. Thank you.